This week I speak with Elaine Allensworth, Director of the University of Chicago Consortium on School Research and Managing Director of Urban Education Institute about her study, The Educational Benefits of Attending Higher Performing Schools, Evidence from Chicago High Schools, which was recently published in Educational Evaluation and Policy Analysis. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. So tell me, what did you decide to study? What were your research questions for this amazing investigation? Here in Chicago, we have a school system that's really premised on choice. Um, and I think school districts across the country, you see this in a lot of states. There's a um, there's this assumption that if we get students to go to really high-performing high schools, that they will do better. And we also see this in many policies. There are a lot of policies that are designed to either push students out of low-performing schools or to encourage them to go to schools with higher performance metrics. You know, a lot of schools look good in terms of their average test scores or their graduation rates because they serve students who already had high achievement coming into high school. And so it's hard to disentangle whether the schools are doing a good job serving the students so that you know they look good on their performance metrics because their students are learning a lot and they're feeling supported and doing well at the schools, or if they look good just because the schools are serving more advantaged students. So we really wanted to disentangle that. So we looked to see whether or not um, students uh, had higher outcomes if they attended a higher performing school relative to a lower performing school that they would otherwise attend. And when we say higher performing, we, we looked at the metrics that are available to students when they would be applying to high school, so um, at the end of their seventh grade year. So for students, that would be the graduation rates and the average ACT scores of the high schools that are available to them when they were in eighth grade. So we wanted to know, well, if you go to a school that ha that looks strong in these performance metrics, what is the impact on your own performance? And we wanted to look not just at academic performance, but also on the quality of school experiences. We wanted to look beyond test scores. Almost all of the research that's out there is based on test scores, but you know, there's so much more that matters to parents and students than performance on tests. We know that whether or not students get suspended is an, an issue that's important for students. And certainly whether students feel safe, whether they peers that they like, whether they feel like they belong in school, all of those are outcomes that students and families care about. And we thought we really should look at those as well as test scores because that's what matters to families. And what did you find? So we found that the effects of attending a higher performing school really depend on the contrast that's being made and then also on the outcome. So we did basically three kinds of contrast. One is looking at the effects of getting into a selective school. So that's a school that selects students based on their prior academic performance versus any other kind of school. What, what we found is there were no academic benefits for students for getting into these schools. They have really high average test scores and high graduation rates because they only select students who already had very high achievement when they were in the middle grade. So no academic benefits for those schools. But we did find there were benefits in terms of students' experience of the climate of the school. So that students you know, felt safer, they felt like their, um, their peers were more academically oriented, they felt like they had better relationships with teachers. So that was one contrast, looking at getting into a selected school. Another was getting out of a very low performing school into say a mid-tier kind of school. There again, we did not see a lot of academic benefits or many benefits in terms of climate. We did see that students were slightly more likely to graduate high school and there were some college benefits. Again, very small, but there were some benefits that way. But no benefits in terms of, say, test scores or grades or anything like that. Where we did see big differences were for students who um, went to high-performing non-selective schools versus uh, less high-performing non-selective schools. Those students actually saw benefits on multiple outcomes, including test scores, as well as uh, climate. And you know, if a school is non-selective and has high outcomes, it could be because you know the reason they look good is because they're actually serving students well. They might be um, adding value there. And so we did see some benefits. Um, I should say we also saw some negative um, effects from going to higher performing schools and that was in terms of students' grades and sometimes in terms of their coursework. 
so that when students went to a high performing school, they actually uh, received lower PAs, lower grade point averages. Now, you had a huge data set for this because you looked at student achievement data from 2008 to 2011, and then you also had um, access to other data that you were analyzing, like suspension rates and student surveys, as well as course grades and um, application to high schools. Mm-hmm. So that's what, it, I mean, it's an amazing set of data that you had to look at. Yeah. Can you explain how, and in your paper you reference this, how you dealt with selection bias and why was it important for you to control for the bias? Yeah, really important in a study like this to be able to address selection bias because it's really hard to disentangle the extent to which students have higher outcomes because they went to a school that helps their outcomes, you know, helps them do better in school, or if they had other factors that have nothing to do with their school that led them to have higher achievements, like, you know, they had higher achievements before high school or they have more supportive families. So one way that people deal with selection bias when studying school effects is to find schools where there's, say, a cutoff to get into the school and then compare students who are just above the cutoff to students who are just below the cutoff. Another thing that people often do is lottery studies. So they'll, you know, they'll look at all the students that apply to a high performing school and they'll compare students who won the lottery to get into that school to students who did not win the lottery. And there you don't have selection bias because all those students applied to the school. The problem is that only schools that you know, are seen as successful schools are schools that have enough students applying that they can run a lottery. So the selection bias comes at the end of selecting the schools that you're going to include in your study. Because if you only include schools that are successful schools and that are so successful that, you know, they have more students that want to go there than they have slots, that means that, you know, your estimates are again biased because you're only looking at successful schools. So we wanted to look at all schools and all students. And so what we can do is we can compare students that look exactly the same in the middle grade years, but that went to different schools. And so by controlling for all those factors and comparing them to students that look similar in all of those factors, um, we feel like we can get a good estimate of the effects of the high school that they went to. So what implications does your research have for state and district policymakers? Yeah, well, you know, a lot of policy is being implemented that assumes that students will do better if they go to higher performing schools. And we see a lot of programs that have a lot of money behind them that are put in place that also have that same assumption. So we see programs, for example, here in Chicago that, you know, try to get students to apply to selective high schools or they try to improve the information that students have about achievement level to make sure that students go to particular high schools. There are a lot of policies to close low-performing schools and move those students to other schools with the intention of, you know, improving their academic achievement. And so we want people to be aware that you may not get what you expect. So if what you expect is improvements in test scores from some of these policies, these may not be the policy that gets you that. And also in terms of you, there might be some negative outcomes in terms of things like students' grades. But you also might have outcomes you wouldn't consider if you were only looking at test scores, too. And so, you know, I think it should give people pause if they think that they're going to have a particular outcome based on getting students to go to different schools. They may not have the effects that they expect them to have. Terrific. Thank you very much for taking time to talk about your study. Sure. Thank you for listening to Research Minutes. To share your thoughts on this discussion, head to KHUB Conversations at cprehub.org. To subscribe to our weekly podcast and listen to more interviews, head to soundcloud.com forward slash CPRI Knowledge Hub. And for the latest videos, podcasts, and discussion updates, follow us at CPRI Hub on Twitter and CPRI Knowledge Hub on Facebook. We look forward to hearing from you.